Hello and welcome to my next performance tutorial. This time I will show you how to perform an explicit dynamics analysis of a simple impact problem. So uh, let's create a new model first. I will select 2D plane stress and default unit system. And now I will import the geometry and you will see that the geometry is very simple. In this case, those are just two rectangles, two, two parts. And uh, let's uh, mesh them first. So let me specify meshing parameters. I will select this part first and then I will switch to advanced. And here I will specify the maximum element size, uh, which will be uh, 4 millimeters, and uh, minimum element size uh, is going to be 0 0.5 millimeters. And then I will select also quad dominated mesh, and uh, now I can confirm and proceed to the other part. So let me select the other part, and uh, this will be, uh, in this case, uh, 8 millimeters, and 0. Point, uh, or actually uh, 1 millimeter. And then and the quad dominated mesh option uh, is also enabled. So now, if I select those parts and uh, click create mesh, uh, I will have a nice uh, quad mesh. Uh, there are no triangles here, so uh, this is the, the type of mesh that I was that I want. It's quite coarse, but uh, it doesn't really matter here. It's just to, to speed up the analysis. Uh, so, um, but otherwise, the, the mesh is quite nice, I would say. All right. Uh, so uh, let's proceed with the analysis setup. Uh, I will define a material first. Uh, this will be a material for, for the bar, so for this green part. And uh, since it's uh, dynamic analysis, I need to specify the density. And this will be quite a typical value. Uh, and then I need to specify the um, elasticity, uh, elastic properties. So Young's modulus, also uh, quite typical, and uh, Poisson's ratio. And those are the values that I need in this case. Mm, and then uh, I will click uh, to add new. And then this will be the material for, for the wall. And this is the, the wall right here. And uh, then I need to specify the density. Uh, so in this case, uh, the density will be basically uh, very large. And uh, of course, this is done on purpose. Mm, and let me explain uh, why I do this. But I will proceed to elasticity now and uh, define the same Young's modulus. So uh, basically, uh, I want to assume that uh, this wall is rigid, uh, but I can't use uh, rigid body constraint because uh, it doesn't work in, in 2D in calculus and, or with shells. Uh, so I can, I'm forced to use some workarounds. And one workaround uh, could be to just increase the Young's modulus significantly, uh, but then uh, this would increase the, the analysis time because it increases the table time increment in explicit dynamics. So instead of doing that, uh, I just uh, increase the density, make this part uh, basically turn it in, into a huge mass and make it pretty much immovable for, for this, um, for this um, impactor. And uh, thanks to that, I, I'm not only able to, to assume that it's sort of rigid, uh, avoid its deformation, uh, but also uh, I speed up the analysis further because uh, the higher the density, uh, for, for some regions, let's say, that the higher the stable time increment and uh, basically it's, it's good for the analysis. Uh, so and that's the, the trick here. And uh, now I need to create sections and let's name this bar and I will select the bar, this part and specify the thickness of 10 millimeters. This is the, the actual thickness that I want to consider here. And now uh, the other section, which will be named wall, and of course material is wall and then I select this part but the thickness will be not 50, not 10 but 15 millimeters and that's because of um, basically I, I want to make sure that contact works, works properly here uh, so um, I want to avoid a situation where nodes meet exactly in the same thickness when they're expanded because two the elements in calculus get expanded and uh, I just want to add some additional um, thickness uh, so that the nodes are not so uh, perfectly aligned and um, contact may work better. And that's the, the reason why I increased the thickness for this uh, rigid wall. Uh, of course, I need to keep the, the right thickness for, for this impacting part, but, but the wall is treated as rigid, so it can be pretty much infinite. All right, mm, let's confirm this. And now I will proceed with, with the setup. So let me define contact. I will specify surface interaction. And for the surface behavior, I, instead of hard, I will choose linear so that I can select the contact stiffness. And uh, I will select contact stiffness, uh, I will make it 10,000. And uh, that's because um, it's li just like with Young's modulus, it impacts the stable time increment. Uh, so uh, I shouldn't uh, keep it at too large value. And because of that, I intend to decrease it somewhat. 
All right, so let's confirm this. And now I am use uh, I, I will use uh, the search contact pairs tool. I will select contact and search for available uh, surface pairs. And uh, then um, I can only uh, select this part and this this interaction, and make sure that uh, master is this one and uh, slave is this one. So this is what I wanted here exactly. All right. Uh, so now uh, step definition, and this will be uh, the dynamic step. Uh, explicit type, of course, for, for this one, and uh, I will select geometric nonlinearity, and uh, now this part. Uh, this uh, incrementation section here is very important, is crucial for explicit dynamics, so I'm going to explain uh, all those um, settings individually. Uh, so, first of all, uh, maximum increments. Uh, this number needs to be increased because um, in explicit dynamics there are uh, lots of increments, and the default value of 100 is definitely not enough and the analysis will stop to run out of increments we don't want that so let's increase it to some large value uh, it's up to you but it just needs to be large to, to make sure that the analysis won't stop because of uh, running out of increments uh, then the time period um, just it's just the time period of the event so uh, nothing really uh, special here and uh, then the initial time increment um, you will see that it actually doesn't matter in, in this type of analysis but let's select uh, in, in the explicit dynamics analysis, but let's specify some value, a non-default one, and then uh, the minimum time increment. And this one is also very important uh, because it controls mass scaling in Calculix. Uh, what I mean is that uh, in basically in explicit dynamics, you can run uh, high speed dynamic analysis where you have some impact, crash, and then so on. Uh, but you can also analyze quasi-static problems uh, with uh, large linearities, uh, for example, difficult contact uh, problems and uh, convergence issues, uh, which are not the case in which are not relevant in, in explicit dynamics. You, you don't deal with, with convergence issues here, basically. Uh, so uh, then the, the, the process, ten, the, the simulated processes tend to be quite long. Uh, in the natural time scale, uh, you could uh, artificially speed them up, uh, so basically um, decrease the, the time period. Uh, but instead of doing that, um, there's a better way. You can use mass scaling. This uh, increases the density of, of basically of the whole model here, in the case of Calculix, uh, and it uh, does so to reach the specified target increment, which is the minimum time, in time increment that is specified here. So, for example, if I leave it at this value. And it will scale them the mass of or density of, of elements uh, from the stable time increment calculated from material properties and element size uh, to this value uh, so we can uh, apply some large uh, scaling. And in this impact problem, I want to avoid it, uh, so I'll specify a very low value to make sure that it doesn't scale the, uh, the mass because it only uh, applies the scaling if, if the stable time increment is. Um, lower than uh, than specified minimum time time increment uh, so it, it shouldn't uh, happen here and then maximum time increment is also quite important because uh, if it's too high then uh, the analysis may fail and uh, because of that i will specify lower value to, to make sure that um, basically it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't fail uh, because of too large uh, increment all right, and the last one is output frequency. It's also very important in the case of explicit dynamics because, as, as I said, mm, there are lots of increments in this type of analysis, and you don't want to save the results for all of them because the file will be the results file will be huge, and because of that, uh, it's usually a value between 100 and 1000 uh, is up to you, but in this case, 100 makes sense, so uh, let me specify that. All right, uh, that's all for the setup of, of the step and uh, then I can proceed uh, with the rest. So, uh, now uh, let's uh, specify the uh, initial condition uh, because uh, I need to specify initial velocity of this impactor and I can either select it or I can use the part name uh, right here and then I will specify the value uh, which will be 1500 millimeters per second uh, and then I can confirm this. Uh, let me just make sure that that is the right part, so uh, this one, okay. And now I can confirm this, uh, and then I will define boundary conditions. Uh, so the first boundary condition uh, will be uh, for this whole part, so I'll use part selection, and it will be uh, y direction. I want to make sure that this part doesn't move in the y direction, it only goes uh, in, in the x direction and doesn't deform or, or go in, in y direction. 
All right, and then uh, another boundary condition uh, for this edge here, uh, for, for this edge uh, at the back of the rigid surface, or, or let's say rigid, rigid surface, and I want to block all the degrees of available degrees of freedom to make sure that it doesn't move. So, and this is also uh, the boundary condition I'm going to specify. And then uh, we have all the boundary conditions. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, I will only uh, change the output request. Let's go to field outputs first, uh, element output, and here, uh, here's another trick. Because normally you won't be able to uh, track the progress of explicit dynamics analysis. It will it won't show you um, any progress in the job monitor, but if you select uh, NR here, uh, so this is the energy density, uh, if you select it for element output, then uh, in job monitor you will see the progress of the analysis to show the, the actual time uh, it will report this, so this is quite uh, nice uh, workaround for, for not being able to, to track the analysis progress normally. And then uh, I will define history output, and this will be contact output and uh, default uh, CF variable, so contact force. Uh, I will only change it to on, to totals. Uh, I will total change to totals to, to only, uh, so that it only saves uh, total value of, from the whole uh, contact service. And uh, the contact pair is the only one here available, so let's leave it. And then uh, the uh, you basically the, the setup is complete, mm, but there's one more thing that I need to do in order to run this properly, uh, because and there is uh, one um, bug or limitation in Calculex regarding 2D analysis and initial velocity. Basically, it won't work um, as long as you create a surface, uh, node, node type surp surface, based uh, on the node set used for this initial condition. I can't do this here because uh, basically uh, I'm not able to uh, select uh, the node set that was used for, for this initial condition uh, because it's created internally and I'm also not able to uh, select a node set for, uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, re reselect the part here, uh, but I'm also not able to um, select the, uh, any, even if I define for example, let, let me and show you, I will define uh, some node set for, for this part. Uh, so let's let's select the whole part. And then if I go to velocity, uh, initial velocity, I can't select the uh, node set, uh, at least currently. Uh, so I need to select the part, and this will be this part. And then I can delete this uh, node set. And then I just need to go to uh, Calculix Keyword Editor, and then to uh, initial conditions and uh, I will copy the name of the uh, node set from here then I will go to surfaces uh, add keyword and I will specify uh, user defined keyword this will be surface and uh, type will be or actually let's specify the name first the name will be dummy because uh, the surface doesn't have to be used for anything uh, it can be named in any way it just needs to be defined uh, and then type is node and uh, I will paste the uh, the, the name of the node set used for the initial velocity condition. So let's confirm this and now I can run the analysis and you will see uh, the progress thanks, thanks to um, the fact that I'm saving the energy. Alright, the analysis is completed. Uh, it was actually so quick that uh, you couldn't track the, the progress of the analysis but if you go to job monitor you can see those um, actual total time lines so if you scroll back, you'll also see uh, a few of them. And basically they were all report reported at the same time because of how short the analysis was. But if it was uh, longer, then you would see the actual progress reported like this. So it would be actual total, total time reported um, several times. And then because, thanks to that, you would be able to track the progress of the analysis. So this is quite nice um, workaround if, if, you, um, if you save the, the energy. All right, let's go to the results. And here I just need to select the true scale and you can see that we have a few frames available here and uh, I can zoom in and select uh, maybe let's let's see the displacements first and then you can see that at this point uh, the um, impactor actually uh, bounces back from from the wall and then you can also uh, check the stresses so if you go to the first frame and then scroll you can see uh, how the stresses change in this bar uh, until it separates from from the uh, wall so uh, here you can see that it starts separating basically 
All right, uh, but uh, what I'm actually going to analyze here is uh, not uh, stress or displacement, but uh, I'm actually interested in, um, in the contact force. So let's select history output, total surface force uh, and force in X direction. And then let me go to the sheet in, in CalcPad that I have here. You can see very simple calculation and this is really uh, some, some simple formulas. And uh, here you can see uh, the force uh, that was estimated for this case, it should be around 6,000 newtons. And then uh, if I go to the analysis, you can see that it's uh, close to that. I mean, uh, it's not perfect agreement. There is some discrepancy, uh, but uh, remember that we are using a very coarse mesh here. And then also is quite simplified. We're using 2D. There can be some inaccuracies because of that. And uh, considering uh, all those facts, I, I could say that uh, the results are pretty accurate. And uh, we just wanted to, to predict them, um, estimate the value um, predicted approximately, not, not a very, very accurate um, result. So for, for that, I would say that this is uh, actually uh, sufficient. All right, uh, that's it for this Prepomex tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.